secret that I've been keeping from you for the last two years, which is that my brand new album. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're looking through the files and discussing all the details of the songstress's upcoming 11th album. Look at that cover, it's so tortured, so poetic. Potential Easter Eggs Taylor Swift is officially the queen of Easter eggs. It all started when her website crashed on the night of the 2024 Grammys and an error code message that unscrambled to red herring. Given that fans expected her to announce Reputation Taylor's version, and Swift showed up in a Reputation-coded outfit, the songstress's plans were executed perfectly. I'm sorry, the old Taylor can't come to the phone right now. When the April 19th release date was revealed, even more Easter eggs were uncovered. April 19th is National Cat Lady Day, a tribute to the feline lover. Kama is a cat, purring in my lap cause it loves me. And let's not forget the appearance of Benjamin Button in the Time Person of the Year shoot. Notably, April is also National Poetry Month, which fittingly aligns with Taylor Swift's sign-off, All's Fair in Love and Poetry. Take me to the lakes where all the poets went to die. I don't belong, and my beloved neither do you. Travis Kelsey. Power couple Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey have been making headlines. In the same week that Swift broke the record for Album of the Year wins, the Kansas City Chiefs won their second Super Bowl in a row. But when it came to Swift's upcoming album, there was one question that people were really dying to know. How is Travis Kelsey involved? Since Swift reportedly has been working on the album for two years, it's not likely that her recent relationship will make the cut for these tracks. However, the tight end did share that he has listened to the album already and has nothing but good things to report. Has she let you hear any of the new music? Um, I have heard some of it, yes, and it is unbelievable. I can't wait for uh, her to shake up the world when it finally drops. You gotta give us something about the new album. Oh, Anything I can't good? give you anything. <laughs> Track stylization. Throughout her career, Taylor Swift has explored various styles when it comes to her albums, from traditional capitalization on her earliest albums to the all lowercase type of her sister albums Folklore and Evermore, Taylor Swift is no stranger to experimentation. Most importantly, the stylization of her track list typically says something about the themes of the songs. If they call me a slut, you know it might be worth it for for instance, the lover track, Me, purposely emphasizes Swift's self-confident anthem. For the tortured poets department, we're seeing more punctuation than ever before. Fans pointed to the interesting use of a question mark in Guilty as Sin, whereas Florida, or Florida, was an instant eye-catcher with not one but three exclamation points. With Swift, nothing is unintentional, and we can't wait to see what these artistic choices mean for the tracks. I just may like some explanations. The Vibe Taylor Swift's 10th studio album was an ode to midnight musing. But what hour is Sad Girl O'Clock? Arriving at the 2024 Grammys in a white strapless Scaparelli gown and black opera gloves, it was clear that Swift marked a big shift moving into her forthcoming era. The album cover reveals more about the aesthetic, with a soft-lit black and white still of the songstress on a white sheeted bed. Many have noted similarities to the Folklore and Evermore albums and their accompanying eras, particularly in the poetic and academic style of the promotion. We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race, and the human race is filled with passion. As Swift has been vocal about her interest in trying new things, there's no telling what to expect in this album sound, but there's no doubt the singer will deliver. Production Taylor Swift truly is the woman who never stops. Since 2020, Swift has released three studio albums and four re-recorded albums, so it likely comes as no surprise that the songstress has another album on the way. At the Grammys, she hinted that she'd been hard at work on the album for the past two years telling you a secret that I've been keeping from you for the last two years. Additionally, the release of the Midnight's bonus track, You're Losing Me, may reveal more about the timeline. How long could we be a sad song 
Jack Antonoff disclosed that the late addition to the album was written in December 2021. The song was even performed in the surprise song section of Swift Stop in Melbourne after announcing The Bolter. Could your losing me signal the end of an era? Only time will tell. Tortured Poets is, is an album that I think more than any of my albums that I've ever made, um, I needed to make it. Lyrics. Quill pen songs are songs with lyrics that make you feel all old fashioned. Like you're a 19th century poet crafting your next sonnet by candlelight. While we might not know the sound of the album, there have been hints to the lyrics. For one, the announcement note was mysteriously signed by the chairman of the Tortured Poets Department, which is more than likely a nod to some of the album's content. It's not certain if the letter contains any lyrics, of course, but Swift's follow-up posts revealed more. In two separate posts announcing bonus tracks, the manuscript, and the bolter, she included short lines that appear to be stripped from their respective songs. Swift is pretty much renowned for her riddles and clues at this point, so we'll have our eyes peeled for more excavated details in the upcoming months. Just a picture of a dictionary. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> they're like, they're like, Taylor, we needed to look up 300 different words. The title. As the first album following the Colossal Eras tour, the Tortured Poets Department marks a pivot in Swift's discography. Boys only want a love if it's torture. Don't say I didn't, say I didn't. Not only does the monochromatic aesthetic stand in stark contrast to its colorful predecessor, Midnight's, but it also diverges from Swift's standard. Whereas her prior album titles have been on the short side, her 11th clocks in at four words, doubling the length of her longest publication. Eagle-eyed fans also noticed a similarity in the title to the Tortured Man Club, the group chat between actors Joe Alwyn, Paul Meskel, and Andrew Scott. So what's the name of the WhatsApp group that we're in? <laughs> <laughs> Tortured... It's either the Tortured or the Lonely... Tortured Man Club, I think. Oh, yeah, probably, yeah. You, Tortured me, and, me, you, and Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. It hasn't had much use recently. Only when the files are released will the reference be confirmed. Now let me dispel a few rumors so they don't fester into facts. Collaborations. I love to make things with my friends. I love to work with my friends. I think that the experience of making something is is just as important as how proud you are of it in the end. When you think of Taylor Swift, do you think of Post Malone? Well, after April 19th, you definitely will. Upon the release of the album Tracklist, it was revealed that the rapper will be featured on the opening track, Fortnite. In addition, there'll be a team up with Florence and the Machine on Florida. She manages to like use elements of her life, but with such grace. While no further details have been divulged yet, Fans suspect the return of fan favorite collaborators Jack Antonoff and Aaron Dessner. With so much mystery surrounding the release, we wouldn't discount the possibility of even more surprise appearances yet to be revealed. Album release. The archives of the Tortured Poets Department will officially be declassified on April 19th. Until then, there are multiple ways for fans to prepare. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure, calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm! Vinyl, cassette, and CD enthusiasts alike will rejoice in being able to add to their collections. Additionally, Swift has already announced two variants, which respectively include the manuscript and the bolter as exclusive bonus tracks. This is maybe the title that gives the least away. So a manuscript is, of course, a book, document, or piece of music. I think you can also refer to a film manuscript. That makes for a total of seven different variations available for pre-order, including the standard digital version available for pre-save on Spotify and pre-add on Apple Music. Knowing the mastermind, though, there is no doubt there will be more surprises along the way. To assess the equation of you, check me. I couldn't do. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. The Tracklist As a songwriter, Taylor Swift never fails to deliver artistic and often tongue-in-cheek song titles. Daddy, I love him! Luckily, fans didn't have to wait long for the big reveal. A Swift posted the tracklist to the Tortured Poets Department just a day after the announcement. The 16 tracks, plus the bonus songs affiliated with special edition releases, reveal much about the themes of the album, with references to her previous home in London and even her Tampa, Florida tour stop, which came just after the announcement of her public breakup. They say home is where the heart is, but 
that's not where mine lives. You know I love a London boy. Needless to say, we'll be making sure we have tissues on hand for our first listen. I think we need to acknowledge that the Lover House was burned down. Which song are you most excited for the chairman of the Tortured Poets Department to release? Let us know in the comments. Thank you, I love you. Thank you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.